Yeah, and I'd like the chance to vote on some of this stuff, you know, rather than just have the city try to shove it in my face all the time like they try to do. But, you know, our, our city taxes in Crystal have gone up uh, 22 percent the last four years, and yet, you know, they're still whining and moaning. It's just, uh, we'll save Crystal for next week's show or something. I'll get back into them. Let me, let me uh, touch on another issue that uh, I care a lot. In fact, let me first, let me just ask you a question about the Republican Party generally speaking. Um, I've said the Republicans in Washington could screw up a one-car parade, but I do like the local Republicans here, you know, in this area. How do you think, I mean, it's just the message of jobs, um, taxes, that kind of stuff. Is that really resonating as the, what the state party is wrapping around and what you're seeing door-to-door? Is that what people are really focused on? Should that be our way we take back the House and Senate? Yes, absolutely. I, I think that the uh, Republican Party perhaps has a bit of a reputation uh, that maybe some people may think that it was uh, good or bad. They lost their way uh, by getting off on some of the social issues bandwagon. But uh, the delegation, especially the people who endorsed me in Senate District 43, oftentimes would begin a conversation with, I'm a conservative first and yeah. then a Republican because of the, the way that they've broken the brand and at the national level. You know, your one car parade, that's a great <laughs> analogy. You know, when you have uh, Republicans in charge of Congress and the White House and we have programs like um, No Child Left Behind and we yeah. have, you know, bailouts, we have Medicaid Part D, we are expanding the scope of government, we are expanding the spending of government they have totally gone against the, the three core principles of the Republican Party being a constitutionally limited government, you know, individual rights and responsibilities and respect for the free markets. I think that people have kind of come back to that, to the party. The delegation that is made up are more bit focused on those issues of constitutional government. And I think that it is showing, like you say, not only in some of the candidates that have been endorsed and are coming out, but where, um, where the message is going. Because it is, if you have government out of business's way and you respect back to free market and I know there are a lot of people who want to say that the markets have failed but you know it's it's, it's much more uh, topic than what we could get into in, in these 30 minutes oh, that uh, we really there is not we don't have free markets in this country the amount of regulation uh, that goes on in many industries does not create that environment but when you have uh, government out of people's way it, it is what has it was the idea the principles that founded this country it is what has made us great when we have both uh, individual and personal freedom and then we and we have personal liberty and economic freedom those working together you can do what you want to improve your situation to make life better for yourself and your family and then you are able to own and control uh, what you have created or earned that has been the, the secret to our country it's why it, even with the problems we have we have we are still a destination for people around the world. And I think that the Republican Party is returning to its roots uh, of, of those three core principles. And, and so, yeah, I, I see it much more here in Minnesota than I do across the state. And I'm, I'm glad to be a, a, you know, one of the candidates as a part of that. Cool. You know, you mentioned uh, just one last thing. Uh, you just triggered my head. I've got to touch on this. You know, the, you mentioned the federal government and, and how the people... You know, my theory is the people closest to the problem are the best people to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Well, the feds like to try to solve everything. Mm -hmm. You know, they like to try to push spending, or, you know, push, they push mandates on the states through mm -hmm. Medicaid and other things. How do we reverse that trend? How do we bring government back to where, you know, we, we don't, the feds aren't telling us what to do with schools and some guy in Washington's not telling us what bridge we have to fix. I mean, mm -hmm. where do we even begin? Reasserting that Ninth and Tenth Amendments. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, and I just, I, I, just as a comic kind of thing, I mean, you're right. There is no area of our lives they don't feel that they can touch. Uh, they actually, there is a bill in Congress to regulate the volume of commercials on t <laughs> television programs. So, I mean, there really is not an area that they don't think that they can... can uh, well, trying to ban French fries, too, right. all that fun stuff. There you go. But yes, the Ninth and Tenth Amendments of the Constitution uh, express that, uh, you know, any powers not given to the federal government are reserved to the states. And, you know, I think that having state legislators who understand that, you know, is, is probably pretty important going forward. If you have faith that Congress is going to you know, be a constitutionally limited government anytime soon, then, you know, you can, you can go that way. But uh, if you don't think that they're going to protect your constitutional rights at the front door, I think that the state legislators who understand the Tenth Amendment will, will help uh, protect you at the back door.
I agree. Well, I'll tell you, we are quickly running out of time. Um, you know, where, where can we find you on the web? And uh, uh, tell everybody your uh, website and where we can hear more from you on the issues. Sure. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my, I do have a website. It is dylan4senate.com. And whether you spell it out or you use the number, both of those will get you to that. Uh, I'm also, I have a Facebook page. and I, you I'm know, a I, fan. And you can follow me on Twitter <laughs> as well. Uh, the best place is that, that website, dylan for senate uh, It kind of it will link you to everything else. We, you know, we keep it updated with a with a blog entry, uh, you know, just sometimes it's thoughts from the trail. It's it's a new issue. If I hear uh, from more people about what's important to them, you know, we'll try to have a, a new issue come up and, and be relevant. And you get your yard signs, make a donation, all of it right on there. All of that right there, one cool. stop shop. Cool. Well, thanks for coming in, Noran. It's great to have you. Good luck to you. Hey, you people in SD43, put my friend in office, kick Bonoff out of there, and restore some constitutionality to the state of Minnesota. All right. That's all the time we have for this week. I will see you next week. I'm out of here.